Hi everyone, my name is Marie Chang. I normally do videos about art and about my drawing process, but I am also a writer and I work in entertainment. That's actually my main career. So I thought I would go through and talk a little bit about my internship experiences, um, how I got them, how much they paid me, what I had to do when I was an intern, and then also what I learned as a result of that internship. When I was in film school at Chapman, I had four internships total, and they kind of varied based on what the specific niche was, but they were all entertainment focused for the most part and like based in the idea that I would someday work in film and television. So my fir very first internship in college was during my sophomore year spring semester. Um, it was at a medical animation company and I had heard about this little company through an alumni of Chapman and you know he posted in like our Facebook group asking for potential candidates and I submitted myself and at the time there were a couple different options. You could apply to be their digital artist intern, their research intern, and I think there might have been one more but those were like the three main positions and I as an animation major really wanted the digital artist one. So I remember submitting my cover letter, my resume, and my portfolio and at the time I like, barely had anything I honestly felt like I wasn't as um, I didn't like present myself in as ideal of a way as I could have but I was very very lucky to get an interview and they brought me in and then afterwards in about a week I think it was about a week I had heard that even though they liked me they couldn't offer me the digital artist position but they liked my production skills, they liked my note-taking skills, and they were like, you know, we can offer you a role as a research intern, which was great. Um, that internship lasted, I believe, three or four months, and I went in approximately twice a week. And throughout the course of me being an intern, I had opportunities to wear sometimes the digital art intern would be overwhelmed and so they would pass along some of uh, the responsibilities to me and I had a chance to prove myself basically. And I think about halfway or three quarters of the way through that internship, I started having, and there was enough of an overflow of work for digital art that I started taking over more and more of it and I was able to show that I was able to do it and at a certain point they were like, hey, we're actually gonna change your title to digital artist intern even though we had originally hired you to do research simply because you're doing so much more digital art than research now, which was awesome. And I think that's one of the big things that I learned from that internship experience is like, even if you don't sign up for, or you don't get into the department that's like your first choice, you should always just say yes to the opportunity if you feel like it's the right place where you could learn because you never know what opportunities could evolve. Like I had no idea when I accepted it that I would be later considered for the title that I had originally wanted, but because I made that choice, um, it was possible. So my second major internship while I was in college, and the first one that was like a big studio name was for Mattel. And the process for that one was a little bit different. My upperclassman friend uh, at Chapman reached out to me because he knew someone at Mattel who had reached out to him and basically offered to put him in contact for the program. And he decided that uh, I might be a better fit for it. And you know, I had worked with him on a student project before. So we had a rapport and it was really great to know that my friendships in school extended past um, the academic setting and that he was you know so kind to put me up for a professional opportunity for that internship I remember submitting my cover letter my resume I don't think that they looked at my portfolio as much because this was for a it was a production slash development internship for something that would become known as Playground Productions, which is like the animation arm of Mattel. And at that time, they were looking for interns to work on Ever After High and Polly Pocket and Monster High. And I was really excited to see what my major animation looked like in the real world, especially in the context of like a toy company, which I didn't have a lot of experience with at all. For that one, I remember submitting through the online portal as usual, and then I just put like, you know, so-and-so recommended me 
um, and I think I wrote up like a, a cover letter that was specific to the content for Mattel. And then in a couple of weeks, I heard back from one of the recruiters. She called me like randomly. Basically, they just like did a little phone screening right there on the spot. And then I think once I passed that initial phone screening, they passed me along to the actual department. I remember getting that second phone call where I had a conversation with the person who would be my supervisor and they were kind of in charge of the interns in that department and I had a really great conversation with them and just felt like I could like learn a lot from if I were given the opportunity and yeah it just felt like we had a good connection. So after that happened, I didn't hear back for like another couple of weeks. And then I got the phone call that I was given or awarded the internship, not from that person, but from the first person in HR who told me like what my start date would be and um, all those details. For the Mattel internship, it was 40 hours a week, at least, uh, Monday through Friday in their headquarters in El Segundo in Los Angeles, and it paid 15 an hour, which at the time, and I think still now, is a really good rate. I think every paid internship varies, but usually they'll do like minimum wage, whatever it is for LA, but Mattel paid me the same amount that I would end up making when I was a production assistant later on. So that was really cool. Super happy about that. They did not provide lunch, but you could go to the cafeteria and buy lunch there. A lot of times I would just pack my own thing and like go figure it out and just have it ready to go. They also would have, you know, occasional events and the interns would always be included and invited. Now I really want to talk about what I did during my actual time at Mattel. I, as their intern, would help them put together like PowerPoint decks sometimes for presentations and I would go to intern specific events. Half the time you were learning from your department. So like they had interns from all over, all over, uh, interns from all different departments. There were some who were toy designers, some who were product designers, um, graphic designers, illustrators. I think there was a department for business and HR. There was just like a lot of different categories you could be placed with. So you would learn from your respective department. And then you also had an intern specific component where you were put into groups and then assigned a project to work on for the duration of your internship. And that was really cool because you got to get to know the, you got to get to know the other interns and I had the chance to meet people and also learn from them. Like I don't, do not have a art school, like a conservatory or toy design background. So there were certain things where I'd be like, oh, I didn't know that we were supposed to like present it this way. Or like, oh, I've never, like I had never seen someone come up with like a mock-up of like a toy before. So that was really, really fun. And I think that something that was really great about that setup was that you still were able to grow in your own department, but you left feeling like you were at least close friends with a few of the other people who were interns in your class. I really loved being able to see a lot of departments that were very different and had very different goals work together so closely because usually, and even in my experience now, I, you know, you only see like the part of the puzzle that you work on but sometimes you don't see the rest of it so for me now I would ver be very unlikely to be exposed to what like the toy department is thinking or what marketing is thinking because it would never be within my realm of control but because at that internship everything happened kind of under one roof you were able to see all those moving parts and that's something that even to this day I haven't experienced outside of that specific internship. The third internship I had was with Sony Pictures Entertainment. And um, that this was an internship that I had taken, that I got uh, because I was at the time kind of unsure of what I wanted to do with my major. I remember, you know, taking animation classes and being like, honestly, I'm not good enough of an animator to do this as a living. Like I would need to do a lot more work. And also it just like didn't really feel like it was something that I wanted to pursue but I loved like being in that world and I knew I wanted to do something somewhat creative and I wanted I wanted it to be like film related but it didn't have to be film at that time and so I 
thought that it would be a really interesting opportunity when I found out that Sony offered a UX UI design internship. I have no experience in that specific world whatsoever, but I was genuinely really curious about it at the time and that's like the whole point of you being in school and like hopefully people are a little more forgiving when you're at that stage if you don't know like everything about that world. So this internship I originally was able to get distantly through Chapman. So at Chapman during the time that I went there they had a partnership with Sony where they would um, bring over one of their recruiters to our Chapman campus and we would have our first round interviews with this recruiter on campus. We, I remember submitting my resume and my cover letter and I might have done like a little blurb or something. I don't know what you call it, but something to just be like, hey, this is why you should choose me. And then the Chapman Career Center, someone there like went through all those applications and then filtered like whatever percentage they thought would be a good fit for the recruiter who they brought on campus. And then I was very fortunate to be one of those candidates. And so I remember having my, it was like a really short 15 minute interview. You could tell that she was just checking to make sure that you like knew what Sony Pictures was. You like knew what movies and TV shows they did and like could hold the conversation and like dressed up properly like a person and you know I brought like a printout of my resume and all that stuff but it was very much like a down-to-earth low-key conversation. Uh, a couple of weeks later I got a call from her, the person who I'd met with at Chapman saying hey we passed you along to like our UX UI, UX UI design department and the person who's in charge of the intern there is interesting, interested in speaking with you. Do you want to come to Culver City and have your interview and like see what the department is like and meet the team? I went in for my interview and I remember like noticing that this person had some ugly dolls, stuffed animals on her uh, couch. And I like really like that line of dolls. I think they're like really funny. And I like made some random comment about it. And then we just had our interview and this interview was different because they literally went through the portfolio that I submitted uh, like to Sony. They went through it with me in front of me and like scrolled down on my portfolio and like gave me their thoughts and feedback and I had to talk about it. And that was so terrifying. Like I, I it made me be like, oh boy, I really got to work on my, on my artwork because it's like so nerve wracking to have someone look at it in front of you while you're like there. And like, I was trying not to make any faces because if I, even if I didn't like something, like I can't show that I didn't enjoy looking at my own work, even though like I, not too many people like love the opportunity to look at their own stuff. Um, but yeah, I remember being really, really nervous. And after that interview, I was like, oh, I don't think I got it because that was so nerve wracking. And the, the person was super, super nice and like really gracious, but usually when, people are like really nice about my stuff. I assume that they like are just doing it because they're being nice, you know, and they want to let me down easy. And so I was like, all right, that was a unique learning experience. Um, I'm going to go try to go find my car and go home. So I was really, really surprised when I ended up getting the call again from the recruiter, not from the person who I would end up working with that I had gotten that opportunity. So the Sony internship that I did was part-time during the school year. I believe it was my it was fall of my junior year. So this was uh, while school was in session and this was a particularly overwhelming semester, just to be really honest. I remember, I think I had like 15 or 18 credits and they were all really hard classes that required me to be at school a lot using their lab facilities. But the internship was 20 hours a week. And then um, the drive from Orange to uh, Culver City was at least an hour depending on traffic and so it just became like a 35 like a 30 35 hour commitment right off the bat on top of all of my coursework and that was just an incredibly stressful semester but I thought it was worth it it was really cool to be in that world what I did as an intern there was specific to my department and much more so specific to my department than the fact that I was an intern. The interns didn't really have like an ongoing project amongst all of us. We would have little workshops here and there, which I really appreciated. And it was great to meet people who were from all facets of the studio, but it was very much like you were mentored by your respective department. So I spent almost all of my time with the immediate um, department that I was with and I would occasionally meet people who were at least in the same building, 
but I think from that internship I've stayed in touch with like one or two of my friends who I happen to work like closely with so yeah it was just a very different experience but again super valuable in its own right they paid me I believe minimum wage at the time maybe a little bit more but I think it was around that point food was not provided but you could go onto the Sony law and get food one of the perks that I really appreciated about this one was that you had access to all of the Sony employee screenings and events so like sometimes they would have free like ice cream trucks on the lawn I could get that or like I could stay late and wait out traffic and watch a movie, which I did a couple times. And even though those sound like really silly things, they meant a lot to me when I was an intern. And honestly, they still mean a lot to me now that I'm not. So yeah, those were great things that I really appreciated. The biggest thing that I learned from that one was actually just about UX UI design. I ended up leaving that internship and being like, you know what, I don't want to do this for my career. And I think it's a unique thing that doesn't get brought up a lot, but like, Sometimes you'll do an internship and it'll it'll make you uh, realize something that you don't want to do. And that's totally okay. And that's not a reflection on the studio or the individuals involved. It's just you discovering what works best for you. But I really liked all the people I was with. Like I loved the interactive parts of it. I had a chance to conduct my first user interface test, which sounds so nerdy, but like I loved like sitting people down and being like, okay, did the, do these buttons make sense? Like what is like the easiest way to navigate this? And that was really exciting, but I didn't like sitting down and like building wireframes by myself. And I think there were just a lot of aspects that didn't play into my interests or my strengths. And I learned that because I had the opportunity to be in that space. So that was something that I'm really grateful to have had the chance to do. It definitely made me appreciate anything that's well designed and easy to use. I was like, oh, a lot of work goes into this, <laughs> into making this possible. I think for anyone who is interested in an internship like this, again, I would say be familiar with the material. I would research any individual who you know is affiliated with your uh, department. You know, just know like what their background is, where they went to school, what their career path looks like, so that when you're taking meetings and you have a chance to meet other people, you um, have something to speak to and you're able to ask really well thought out questions. I think something else that was really unique to this internship was that there was a lot of freedom among the interns. They didn't really handhold you and they weren't like, you have to be at this place at this time and like, this is all you can do. It was very much like, well, if you happen to take initiative and you meet people who are excited about you, you can go and meet with them as long as you're like, obviously being respectful, but like, they're not gonna, yeah, they're not gonna like babysit you. So. Something that was really helpful for me was going to my professors at school and being like, hey, I know you work in the industry. Do you happen to have any friends at Sony Animation right now? Because while I'm super, super stoked to be at Sony at all, I had a particular interest in the animation studio and their animation studio doesn't do like production internships, at least not at the time. It was like specific for story or for art um, and it was incredibly competitive and mostly went to, I think, film, like art conservatory art school kids, which I was not. So I went to my professors and a couple of them were like, oh yeah, we have friends there. I'm sure they'll be willing to talk to you. So they very kindly let me reach out to these people at Sony Animation using their name. And like almost all of them responded positively. And I was able to like just walk down the street during lunch at my internship and go and have lunch with these incredible artists who I had admired and like seen their credits in movies that I loved growing up and even now. And it's really, really cool that they were so open to talk to like a literal nobody <laughs> who was just like stalking them and wanting to learn from them. But yeah, I think that, you know, never be afraid to reach out for what you want. And if you don't happen to have a professor who knows someone, you're always free to talk to your um, internship supervisor or just like get a feel for the other interns, get a feel for what the energy and the environment is like in your studio, because some places will be very willing to do those introductions and some places will not. But it just really depends on your timing and the people around you. So my fourth internship in college was for Nickelodeon Animation. And this had been one of my bucket list internships that I wanted. I'd always wanted to be a Nick turn. I had grown up like watching Nickelodeon. So I was super, super stoked. And honestly, this one was one of the hardest ones to get. So 
I know in my previous stories, I've mentioned that my school had, you know, a part in me getting some of those initial interviews or people who I had happened to come in contact with by going to school. But at Nickelodeon, I literally knew no one and my school at the time didn't have any immediate contacts into Nickelodeon. And I had been applying every semester since my sophomore year. You apply online, you submit your cover letter and your resume, and then like a couple of weeks later, you may or may not get a phone call from one of the recruitment interns at Nickelodeon. So you get a call from them and they're kind of just doing like their the usual conversational thing. They're just checking to make sure, again, that you know what Nickelodeon shows are on the air currently, not just like the nostalgia that you grew up with. It wasn't scheduled, by the way. Like I would literally just be walking to class and get a phone call. They would just like do an interview on the spot and be like, hey, do you have some time? And then I would just <laughs> hope that I had some time and do it. But that is like the first round. And then if you make it past that round, they'll pass you on to a specific show. So at Nick, you can be on a, a production intern on one of the shows. And each show, I think, usually has one production intern. Or you can be like in their other departments, like HR, events, I think, um, marketing, social media. Like they all have their own respective little interns as well. Not little. Their respective like interns as well. I waited a couple weeks and... Uh, literally three semesters, like two or three semesters in a row, I got a call from the show that I wanted and we had the interview and um, it was the same show because I very specifically wanted this one show. And every time the person on the other line would be like, hey, you know, we like you, but it's going to someone else. Sorry, you're our second choice. <laughs> and the third time this person was so kind and, and I think felt bad and was like, I'm sorry, like, it's it's bad news again, you didn't get it again, but you know what, we'll pass you along to another show, there's another show that's coming up, and like, maybe you'll be the right fit for it, and I was like, thank you. So, after like my fourth or fifth rejection from Nickelodeon, I finally got a call one day from a new show that was in development that was looking for an intern, and I had a conversation with someone who I hadn't spoken to before, but we really got along on the phone, and I was super, like, grateful that they were considering me, I thought that they... <laughs> we're like why do we want this girl that's been rejected from like all the other shows it's like the leftovers anyways so and I was so excited when I finally got the call that I had gotten the Nick internship like after trying for five semesters and then my body decided to give out and I had a terrible health scare so that was fun I got to email Nickelodeon and be like sorry I have a foot tumor maybe and I can't intern this semester because I get to go into surgery and then recover for months so I was very cheerful and very upset and I had assumed that they would honestly what they used to do is like replace you right and then you have to try again the next semester so I was very bummed had to take care of my physical health first because mm, doesn't matter. I mean, I, I carcass can't intern at Nickelodeon. Sorry. I remember, you know, towards the end of that semester being like, I should just check in with them and see like what's up. And I, you know, emailed them and was like, hey, I'm better now. Everything's fine. Um, I know like I'm so sorry it didn't work out previously, but I'd love to be considered for the summer, if you'll like have me, you know, go through the process again, like just let me know what I need to do. And that show was so nice. And they just held me over and were, was like, oh, you can just like be our intern for the summer. We had picked you already previously. So like, don't worry about it. And I was like, almost cried tears of joy because I didn't have to go through the excruciating process of like, oh, applying and then interviewing and then interviewing again and then waiting. So I was super, super lucky. And I think that's a huge testament to just the people on that show and the people that I had the opportunity to work with there because a lot of big studios you know are well within the right to just be like well you weren't available and like we moved on sorry the internship that i had originally applied for was supposed to be during the spring semester and um because i got pushed to summer my internship quickly turned into like or it became a full-time commitment because yeah, I think you have the option to do a part-time one during the summer, at, the, at least at that time. I'm pretty sure now, and the way that I did it, was it was like a full-time 40-hour-a-week gig. It was whatever the minimum wage was at that time, I think a little bit more than that. And um, it was really cool because Nickelodeon did a similar thing to Mattel in that you, you know, were mentored by your department and you stayed with them, but you also got to participate in Nickelodeon intern specific lunches. So they'd have like lunch and learns and you could go and like, I got to hear like Butch Hartman speak and like hear from like, you know, the creators of Avatar and Korra and like, 
just meet all these people who I had admired from a distance and recognize their names on TV. And it was so cool to be able to go to lunch with them and like have them answer your questions. So that was something that was really, really unique about that experience. Something that they also do now that I'm really jealous I never had the chance to do was that you can get slimed. And so if that's ever something that you're interested in, just know that it's available to all Nickelodeon interns. You also have the chance to organically meet a lot of other people in your intern class. So like I know our intern class would go to Barney's Beanery, which is in downtown Burbank like every Friday or so. I think it might be a different place now and I don't know what the current groups do it as, but that's how we did it. Something that was also really helpful was that even though you, let's say you want to do like an artistic job or like a creative job, you want to be a writer or an artist or whatever it is, um, at Nickelodeon you can take the same tests that those artists would take to get a certain job as an intern for practice, which was really cool because usually you like can't release those tests. like. It's usually reserved for people who are like in the running and they'll only give it out to certain people, basically. And I just remember realizing when I was an intern there, like, oh, I have a lot of work to do on no matter what discipline that I choose. Like I got a lot of work to do on myself. So that was something that I think was very, very uh, helpful for me during my time there. And I also loved that Nickelodeon hired such a high percentage of their interns, which is really rare for a lot of places. You know, a lot of times they'll just hire the intern and then they'll cycle through interns, but the waiting list to get hired full time is like so long, as with many, many opportunities in our field. But um, yeah, it was really great just to see how many interns would be able to make the transition to full time. And I think that they did a really great job of training the current interns to be like the best candidate possible for all the production assistant jobs that would open up periodically. That was a really, really great opportunity. Um, I would say if you are interested in, in a Nickelodeon internship, make sure you are familiar with the shows that are on Nickelodeon. Um, I would also be open to like different opportunities because you might not be able to get on like the one show that you want. Like I literally would apply for the same show five times. And I think that they were, they were just like, you know, are like, would you be accepting of anything else? And so that's something to keep in mind, just like be open-minded and just know that an opportunity as an intern in any of their departments is like such an amazing experience, even if it's not, where you saw yourself initially. And I also think it's super helpful to, to like separate yourself from your application. Sometimes if you don't get asked back or you don't get a call back, it's not because they like hate you. It's not because you like aren't qualified. There are just literally so many people. And I, I don't think I understood the vast like amount of applicants until I started working and realized like, oh my goodness, like there's just, so many people who are interested and there's a limited amount of spots and sometimes they're looking for something that like you can't control like i remember i had an interview with um one of the shows at nickelodeon to be an intern before i finally got in on a different show and i thought that i had really connected well with the team and when i ended up getting um hired full-time at nick later on for a different show i was able to reconnect with the people um, in that group and like we did get along right and it was fine and them choosing to not ask me to be their intern wasn't that they didn't like me or that they didn't want to get to know me once I was there it was simply that they had specific interests or parameters that they were trying to meet and I didn't fit those at that time but that's nothing that like you can really control you know so I would just encourage you to not be discouraged if that happens and to like continue to try to apply because yeah it took me like five times honestly it might be more than that and I've just like shoved it out of my memory but I it was like a hustle so it, don't worry about it if it's not like the if you don't like hear back the first time and like get into your dream position like right off the bat it's not a problem I also do want to mention that my experience is definitely specific to a student who lives or at least has access to the Southern California, Los Angeles area. Um, I know a lot of you watching might not have that same experience. And so ultimately what's most important is that you grow where you're planted, you know? So if you have opportunities to intern locally, try those first. You know, my very first internship wasn't at a big studio um, at all, but what I learned from that experience helped make me look like a better candidate for the big studio internships. 
I also think that if you do go to a school that offers like a semester in LA or a summer in LA to take advantage of that and try it out. I know it's expensive and I know that it's very much a big commitment to make, but if that's of any interest to you at all, it is a huge advantage to be able to have experience at studios that are based in Los Angeles or New York. And I know most of you watching this right now are probably watching this in the middle of the pandemic and many of these big studios are now doing virtual internships. And I could not encourage you enough to take advantage of that right now because prior to this happening, you know, you had to be in LA or New York pretty much. Uh, and you had to have housing and like pay for all these things. And like most internships just have you running errands around Los Angeles, which like is totally a rite of passage and you absolutely learn a lot doing that sometimes, but you're in a unique position now to where you have a lot of opportunities to learn and you're not beholden to having to be in a certain geographic location. So like if you're even on the fence about applying, I literally think this is the time where you should just apply everywhere and know that your effort is worth whatever the outcome is. Even if all you do is you apply and you don't care a response back, at least you have that resume ready, you have that cover letter ready for whenever the opportunities come up. And I think it's still like you owe it to yourself to at least try and like go for these opportunities. I also think that having one or two internships that you do a great job at and that you really connect to people is way more useful than having like four, five, six internships where you kind of are burnt out the whole time and don't make the same connections as you need to. But I think it's no secret that a lot of internships don't pay as much as they need to, which keeps out many, many historically underrepresented groups, which sucks. And I also do know that there's a lot of unpaid internships out there. Um, the reason why I targeted these big studio internships was literally because I could not afford to do an unpaid internship in LA because of how much the gas costs for me to get from Orange to LA and like all the other stuff. And I was just like, I can't, I can't handle this. So you know, I didn't apply for a lot of opportunities that might have been really beneficial to me simply because that was a barrier. And while getting minimum wage at an internship is by no means like the most money ever, it definitely helped offset it. So that's something that I want to tackle least acknowledge. Um, and I also think that there's other ways to do an internship, even if you aren't an enrolled student. So I've had some peers who have technically graduated their undergraduate a degree but want to do an internship because they're either changing their field or whatever they want to try something new many of them will enroll in a local community college for like half a credit because then you're technically an enrolled student and you can claim internship credit if you want to for like half a credit and it is kind of a bummer because you have to pay for that half credit at the community college but it's so much cheaper than like any four-year college there's also a lot of schools that will do like a supplemental internship program where you can apply to the school and be like, hey, I'm doing an unpaid internship. Can you pay me in place of this internship play paying me? I also wanted to say, if you don't want to be an intern at all and you're like, look, I've had another career, I'm way above being an intern or it's just like not for you, I really recommend that you sign up with an entertainment temp agency where they will, you know, put you on executive desks to sub in whenever they're in between um, assistance. It's a way that you can learn. I know that that's not super viable right now in the middle of the pandemic, but I do think that that's the way that most of my peers have found entertainment opportunities. I also think that it's totally worth going for like, if you can get into the mail room, if you can get into on a secretary desk anywhere, like a personal assistant to uh, people who have certain contacts and leverage, those are all helpful ways to get in. But to be honest, a lot of those roles in themselves are very competitive to land without internship experience. So if you are in a position to take an internship, I think that it's really helpful. And, you know, I personally can't imagine my career without all of those internship experiences. They really helped set me up to be prepared for all of the experiences that happened afterwards. And I hope that it was helpful to hear from someone who has been through it and coming out on the other side, you know, what it's been like for me. If you are willing to put yourself out there, I think that a lot of people will be excited to see you as a potential candidate. And I just wish good luck to everyone who is going through this process for the first time. 
And yeah, thanks again for watching this video.